All right, good evening, good evening, good evening. And we're going to get ready to start the um, uh, the evening devotion. I was just checking to see who the, uh, the plenary speakers are at next year's Higher Things Conference. And yes, I am on the other side of the room because Victor's desk was dirty, so I'm using Ambrose's. Um, we will be using the order of close of day devotion on page 298. We'll be looking at Psalm um, 48 and then also Deuteronomy 21 through 10. So let us then begin close of the day. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Psalm 48. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in his, uh, his holy mountain, his, uh, his holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, is the joy of all the earth. Mount Zion in the far north, the city of the great king. Within her citadels, God has made himself known as a fortress. For behold, the kings assembled. They came together. As soon as they saw it, they were astounded. They were in panic. They took to flight. Trembling took hold of them there, anguish as of a woman in labor. By the east wind, you shattered the ships of Tarshish. As we have heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, which God will establish forever. We have thought on your steadfast love, O God, in the midst of your temple. As your name, O God, so your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with righteousness. Let Mount Zion be glad. Let the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. Walk about Zion. Go around her. Number her towers. Consider well her ramparts. Go through her citadels that you may tell the next generation that this is God, our God, forever and ever. He will guide us forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right. Our reading for tonight is Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses 1 through 20. When you go out to war against your enemies and see horses and chariots and an army larger than your own, you shall not be afraid of them. For the Lord your God is with you, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And when you draw near to battle, the priest shall come forward and speak to the people and shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, today you are drawing near for battle against your enemies. Let not your heart be faint. Do not fear or panic or be in dread of them. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for, your, for you against your enemies to give you the victory. Then the officer shall speak to the people, saying, Is there any man who has built a new house and has not dedicated it? Let him go back to his house, lest he die in battle and another man dedicate it. And is there a man who has planted a vineyard and has not enjoyed its fruit? Let him go back to his house, lest he die in the battle and another man enjoy his fruit. And is there any man who has betrothed a wife and has not taken her? Let him go back to his house, lest he die in battle, and another man take her. And the officer shall speak further to the people and say, Is there any man who is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go back to the house, lest he make the heart of his fellows melt like his own. And when the officers have finished speaking to the people, then the commanders shall be appointed at the head of the people. When you draw near to a city to fight against it, offer terms of peace to it. And if it responds to you peaceably and it opens to you, then all the people who are found in it shall do forced labor for you and shall serve you. But if it makes no peace with you, but makes war against you, then you shall besiege it. And when the Lord your God gives it into your head, you shall put all of its males to the sword. But the women, the little ones, the livestock, and everything else in the city, all its spoil, you shall take as plunder for yourself. And you shall enjoy the spoil of your enemy, which the Lord your God has given you. Thus you shall do to all the, to all the cities that are very far from you, which are not cities of the nations here. 
But in the cities of these people that the Lord your God has given you for inheritance, you shall save nothing alive that breathes. But you shall devote them to complete destruction, the Hittites and the Amorites, the Canaanites and the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, as the Lord your God has commanded, that they may not teach you to do according to all their abominable practices they have done for their gods. And so you sin against the Lord your God. When you besiege a city for a long time, making war against it in order to take it, you shall not destroy its trees by wielding an axe against them. You may eat from them, but you shall not cut them down. Are the trees in the field human that they should be besieged by you? Only the trees that you know are not trees for food you may destroy and cut down, that you may build siege works against the city that makes war with you until it falls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, here we have some uh, rules for warfare, and and people might say, well, what the hell? This is why is this in here? Did it? Um, I have a minor interest in the history of warfare. I took a wonderful class in college called the History of Warfare in Europe, and it was taught by Doctor Drummond, wonderful old prof in the history department. And there are uh, many things that I have picked up from him in his teaching style that I incorporate whenever I teach. Um, if I go for like around 10 minutes and stop and ask for questions, that's totally Dr. Drummond. So, um, let's see. Um, what else is up with that? Um, but what you can do is you can learn a lot about the, uh, the culture of a place by how it fights its war. And you can actually learn a lot about God's theology by how he instructs. Israel to fight wars. Um, one of the things is the emphasis that God is the one who's doing the fighting, and that when you're fighting in these wars, you are being an instrument, an agent of God. And it's very merciful. It's not meant to be all out total war. If you have reasons not to be there, if you're if you're doing stuff with your house, if you're about to get married, go home. You don't need to be there. Go, rest. If you're afraid and fearful, get out, because we don't want you to be fearful and mess with everyone else. Rather, make sure all the ducks are in the row and that you're doing what God has commanded, and then go to battle. And when you go to offer, go to war, offer peace first. That's what you do. The exception is the cleansing of the Holy Land. And this, again, is something that, that strikes us as very bad and unsavory today. Um, the thing I would note is that the people in the Holy Land, the, the Hittites and Amorites and Canaanites and Perizzites and Hivites and Jebusites, had 40 years of warning that the, the children of Israel were returning to the Holy Land. And some of them come on out and join with the Israelites and basically convert. And there are others that move to other places and say, all right, we, we understand that the Lord your God has given you this land. The ones who don't go are acting in defiance of God and trying to set themselves against God's plan of salvation, which involves the Messiah being born in the Holy Land. So that's the point. This is a theological thing. It's no, we're, we're not going to let anything hinder the coming of the Messiah. So that is the point there. So. All right. Good evening, Carolyn. I, I am glad the, the surgery seems to went what have gone well and that he's resting. So we will continue to pray for his recovery. Um, all right. With that being said, then it is time for uh, the creed and then the nuc dimittis. So we'll uh, confess the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God. The Father Almighty. Oh, sorry, wait, wait. We're going to pause for a second because I've had a long day. Um, generally hand-to-hand, -hand, uh, in the sense that um, Israel did not have much iron. In fact, that becomes one of the big things later on with the Philistines. Um, the Philistines had iron workers, and as part of their managing of Israel. Israel really didn't have swords. So most of them would end up using spears. That would be the, the primary weapon. You would also have archers sometimes and slingers. Um, 
this is one of the big things with uh with David and his sling. We we mock it, but no, slingers are serious business. Um imagine being hit by a three ounce rock that's highly dense that's moving at around 120 to 160 miles an hour. So something a little bit heavier than a baseball, but yay big and going twice as fast as a, a, a fastball. They're, they're deadly. They're, um, but yeah, it, it would be, um, most often you would have the Israelites coming and attacking a lot of spear work. Um, after David, then they start getting swords, simply because they, they get control of iron and metalworking. But that was one of the reasons why the Philistines were so feared. They were the, uh, the master smiths of the area. Um, a good book on this is a, a, a book by another prophet OU, Dr. Bradford, on a warfare in the ancient world. And it, it talks about a lot about the different things. Um, but one of the things that the Israelites were known for is for being good at controlling terrain, using elevation to their advantage. Um, they did a lot of what we'd call today guerrilla fighting often, uh, simply because the land of Israel that, that they controlled tended to be up in the hills. So they had no problems doing hit and runs and then fading back to the hills. Um, that becomes problematic sometimes when they're supposed to go out and fight because they're almost more conditioned to fight and fade and uh, then go hide. So um, so when the, uh, the Lord wants them to go stand and face an army, they're much more inclined to already be ready to bolt and go back to the bolt holes. And that was actually when you were most likely to die in the ancient world. Um, we, we often think of hand-to-hand -hand fighting and, and spear battles as basically the, the armies are all taking each other on and you're all... The majority of casualties in, in warfare, at least prior to the Civil War, happened when armies broke and they retreated because when you were retreating the when you're fighting face to face you're always worried about defense as much as attack simply because they can attack you and so it, it's poke and prod but when an army breaks and they turn and run then you no longer have to worry about defending yourself you're just totally attacked and that's when the attacks tend to be uh, most effective, especially as if you were fleeing in battle, you often would throw your equipment away, whatever shielding, whatever weaponry you had, so you could run faster because it's like 20 pounds of stuff. So hand-to-hand, um, -hand, but not quite as we think of it. All right, there. Now I feel better. Thank you for asking that question. Now we'll confess the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come in again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Nook de Midas time. Uh -uh. I'm going to 
to do the Nunc Dimittis from DS4 tonight on page 211. O oh Lord, now let your servant depart in heavenly peace. For I have seen the glory of your redeeming grace. A light to lead the Gentiles unto your holy hill. The glory of your people, your chosen Israel. All glory to the Father, all glory to the Son, all glory to the Spirit, forever three in one. For as in the beginning is now shall ever be, God's triune name resounding, through all eternity. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We pray. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings to be upon our people this evening, that you would give us nights of refreshment, relaxation, and then rest in peace. We ask that you would be with those who are sick and recovering, that you would give them rest at this time as well, and that you would use this evening to be a time of refreshment and healing for their bodies. Be with those who worked hard this day, whose labor was difficult, Grant them restoration and grant them comfort in the, the knowledge that their labors aided and helped others. Be with your servant Harley this night. Give him aid and recovery. Heavenly Father, bless us as we prepare for the task that you will set before us in the morrow and give us confidence and good cheer. This we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The concluding prayers. Visit our dwellings, O Lord. And in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Okay, right. Wait a yawn on camera. All right, everyone. Have a good night. <laughs>